Good morning. So almost all of us almost always love new things. And the longing you and I have for new stuff is placed in our hearts by God and for a reason. Jesus himself has been raised from the dead, offering us brand new lives in him. His resurrection is unexpected, unprecedented, and unparalleled. Before the resurrection, death is the ultimate and final reality. But after the resurrection, Christ is the ultimate and final reality. And what God did with his son, he wants to do for us. Last week, we discussed the renewal of our minds. The life you have is a reflection of the thoughts that you think. Change your thinking, and you change your life. The most effective way to do that is by increasingly turning to and repeating God's word instead of constantly repeating the words we tell ourselves. But besides our mind and our body, there's another aspect or another element that makes us who we are. We hear God as he says, I will put a new spirit within you. The Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, was first given at Pentecost to the apostles, and many of us have received it in the sacraments of baptism and confirmation. But each of us also has our own spirit, which is personal. Our personal spirit denotes all that belongs to the higher life of reason, of art, religion, morality, as opposed to our mere flesh, with its instincts and appetites, its passions and its needs. Our flesh is dependent on matter, material things, and conditioned by the laws of nature. We thirst for water because we need it. Our personal spirit, though, is characterized by self-determination and freedom. This can be positive or negative. I listen to a certain style of music because it makes me happy. Or I'm offended by something you say and I become angry. Some spirit always drives our actions, whether we're aware of it or not. Even though we can't see the spirit that's driving us, we can always see the effects. Fundamentally, there's two kinds of spirits. There are spirits opposed to God, or at least isolated or independent of God. This fruits of such a spirit will be any number of unattractive outcomes and behaviors. Fear, slavery to sin, self-centeredness, anger, dishonesty, disloyalty, cowardice, foolishness, and the list could go on and on. But then there are spirits that are obedient to the living God regardless of one's faith background, that the fruits or the signs of the obedient spirit are freedom from fear, selflessness, peacefulness, honesty, generosity, wise choices, all the good stuff that we all want in our life. So when scripture talks about a new spirit, It's this second category that we should be striving for. And of course, the Holy Spirit helps us make the transition. So what does it look like to have a new spirit? You see this clearly played out in a significant episode found in the Acts of the Apostles. That we always read from the Acts of the Apostles during the Easter season and the immediate 
period after Easter and that time period in which the early church continued to grow. The, the story that we're looking at today shows kind of a before and after looking at the apostles. Before the resurrection, they didn't have any access to the Spirit of God. So when Jesus was arrested and put to death, what did the apostles do? They ran. For example, Peter promised that he would stay by Jesus' side, but then he denied him three times. And Peter wasn't the only one. Maybe you found yourself in a similar situation. You want to do some good or the right thing, but you just can't seem to do it. This was the apostles' story, too. But then came Pentecost. They received God's Holy Spirit, and suddenly their own spirits were transformed. And they got into a lot of trouble. They were supposed to be in jail, but then today we hear that the officers come back and report, we found the jail securely locked and the guards stationed outside the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. How would you like to be the guy who had to make that report to your superiors? But it gets worse. As they were processing this information, trying to make sense of it, another court official arrives with even more astonishing news. The men whom you put in prison are in the temple and are teaching the people. The apostles with a brand new spirit, obedient to God, free to go as they please and what they please to do is to stay and preach the gospel to the crowds that have gathered. Now imagine yourself in this scenario. The very leaders who put your friend Jesus to death now command you to stop doing what you're doing, to stop talking about Jesus' name, to stop talking about anything about Jesus. That the old Peter would have said something that kept him alive. But this new Peter says that their spirit is obedient to God not the authorities. And with this spirit, they're unstoppable. Which begs the question, how do we get to that spiritual place that Peter and the other apostles went? First, we have to be honest and name the spirit that is currently directing our actions. Is it opposed to God? Or is it aligned with God? If it's the former, then ask God for help and then practice, practice, practice your faith. You could show up at Mass more frequently or participate in the sacraments. That through our sacraments, God makes himself known to us. A new spirit is part of the new you that God has in mind. But it's up to you to get started by being open to his spirit and letting it renew your life.